Perfection is not the goal. Uh, progress is the goal every day. Um, you're not going to know everything. You're Unless you're an accountant, you're not going to know all the accounting, right? Unless you're a marketing person, you're not going to know the marketing stuff. Learn what you don't know. Just knowing what you don't know is impactful, <laughs> but never expect perfection from yourself. It's okay to be wrong, make mistakes, and learn. Hi, this is Nick Armstrong from Fort Collins Startup Week, and you're listening to the Startup FOCO podcast. Today, I am here with Tammy from Unicycle Business Consulting. Unicycle Business Consulting is sort of like a Robin Hood. They steal big business fundamentals for small business use and teach them how to perform better to grow well. Tammy and I have had a couple of different conversations along the years, and I have really enjoyed and learned a lot from her, so I would love to introduce you to Tammy now. Tammy? Hi, thanks so much for having me. A um, little about my background. I worked for a big giant business for 26 years and four years ago decided what I didn't wanna do for a living that I wanna support my community better with supporting small business. So that's why I do all the things I do. What was the in incentivizing action there? Actually, I have three close friends, uh, two attorneys that have firms in town and one's a psychologist. And they would ask me advice on hiring and HR things, uh, which is part of my background. And one of them even, you know, was like, will you come to my interviews? I just want your thoughts. And so I would do that. And one day she said, when are you going to start charging me for this? And I was like, oh, because um, we always did it at like four o'clock on a Friday and then went straight to the Rio and she bought my dinner. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, my margarita is not my compensation today. <laughs> so um, after that, I started putting together a business plan. And six months later, I quit my job. That's such a great transition. And it shows that your friends maybe sometimes know more than you do when, <laughs> when it comes time to, hey, are you going to charge me for this? Yeah. <laughs> Finding value is such a tricky thing. Are there other areas where you identify with your clients that they've, they're missing the mark or what are the most common problems and, and issues that come up for small business growth? Well, from the HR side, I have two sides of the business, HR and strategic business analysis planning. From the HR side, it's just that there are changes. And COVID, of course, through the, I mean, there were, there were changes every few months um, in HR for small businesses to keep track of. Um, so really, that's usually the first thing my customer comes to me about is HR. Um, for example, six new HR laws went into effect January 1st that impact small business. If you have one employee, it impacts you. So, um, you know, I keep track of all that stuff because they're running their business. They don't, you know, the, that same attorney has other things to do. She doesn't need to keep track of, uh, you know, the new HR law. She just needs me to give her the cliff notes and the resources that she might need, stuff like that. So that that's usually the first thing. So taking all of the, the knowledge that's out in, in the world and bringing it back into the small business and figuring out really what the owner needs to take charge of versus not. Right. I mean, often I read uh, terrible long legal briefs and then give the cliff notes to my client. They only need to know what they need to know, right? What do I got to do? What actions do I need to take, right? Um, so I really would give them bullet points and go, here's the link to the poster you need to download and print, put it up in your break room, you know, that sort of thing. With a, such an action-oriented focus, we, it seems like we might lose attention or concentration on some of the intangibles. And we know that those come into play quite a bit in small mm -hmm. businesses, especially with inter-team dynamics, or even just the small business owner trying to figure out how best to connect with customers and clients. How do those come into play? You know, those from an HR piece, this is one of my soapboxes. Please, please have an employee handbook and a job description. And actually, starting January 1st, every small business needs to have a job description for every role. That was one of the new laws that went into effect in Colorado. But, and you can find boilerplate job descriptions and things out there. By the way, they're fine, but they don't cover the intangibles, they don't cover attitude, they don't cover customer care. And so I really recommend that at the beginning of every job description, there be something similar from your handbook that talks about core values, integrity, customer care, because those things make it able to manage people around the intangibles. You know, um, one of my biggest, most common questions is, how do I talk to this person about their attitude? Um, oh, I, ha I have that skill. Let's go talk about that. <laughs> 
Um, but you really need things in writing to set expectations um, that really support you better. It's so much easier to fire somebody for not showing up to work. Um, but being rude to your customer, that's a whole other bag, right? Unexpected violations of trust or unexpected violations of company culture, other things like that. This was like, this wasn't in the spirit of our company or give first mm -hmm. attitude or whatever else. And assuming all of those things are above board and with honest intent, mm -hmm. they're very tricky to enforce. There's not a metric or a Google dashboard that <laughs> exists for those things. How right. best can a small business, especially a small team or even a solopreneur, bring intangibles to the forefront of the business so that they can be measured in those ways? You know, the first thing is to be intentional and really think about them and write them down for yourself, even a solopreneur, right? What do I want my customer's experience to be like? Um, I bring everything back to the people, to the talent in the business. So even my strategic planning comes back to your, your team and actions you're going to take. Everybody pull it, row in the same way. Um, but as a business owner, the first thing you need to do is, is spend some time thinking about what you actually want. And sometimes that's hard. So I recommend my clients think about what they don't want if they can't come up with it. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, going from this is what I want, but what would that look like and feel like in the business? What would actually happen? What are the most common intangibles that you see problems with that we need to have ten, focus on or attention for? In, in other words, what is the most actionable thing that a small business owner can do right in this moment? Uh, setting clear expectations is, is always the first thing for me. Um, when we talk about, let's take something as simple as dress code. That sounds in, like an easy thing to enforce, an easy thing to define, but it's not. And we're in Colorado. We love our Colorado casual. And by the way, COVID has pushed us farther into casual, I think, me included. Um, so I, I had a client that, this is not my phrase, but I love it. it was, they called it first date ready. So they expect their employees, they can still dress Colorado casual. It happens to be um, someplace with a liquor license. So they want the right feel from their client, you know, for their customer but they also wanted to be first date ready. I loved that phrase because it covers hygiene. It covers all kinds of little intangibles that you don't really have to define. I think that's so smart. At WTF Marketing, the dress code is really just those inflatable dinosaur suits. So I think oh, we're covered awesome. with that. When... Uh, my Twitter handle is Tamasaurus Rex. I'm loving the dinosaur thing. <laughs> Wonderful. How, what is the response from employees? Have you seen a uh, have you seen boosts in productivity? Have you seen boosts in outcomes for businesses that set these expectations for intangibles in motion from the get go? You know, one of the concepts I love introducing into a small business is the concept of internal customer care. So big business talks about internal customer. That's everybody who works around you. If you do your job well, it makes your job the other person's job easier, right? But not everybody's familiar with that. And I love setting that in a culture um, because it gets everybody kind of on the same team. And it acknowledges that you doing your job well and on time and um, you're thorough makes me more successful. And then you tie it all back to the bottom line. Because let's face it, if the business is successful, you can pay your, your employees more. Everybody has more security, better benefits. But when you put that attitude and that whole picture into a business. And, and by the way, in my job descriptions, I also say everybody is responsible for the success of the business in the bottom line, because everybody really is. But um, sometimes employees for small businesses are just like, I don't, you know, what difference does it make to me if they make money? Well, it really should. And if that's your attitude and you can't move out of that space, then we probably need to exit you from this business and it would be best for the business owner. What is the most common question that you get asked for a small business, a, a, a newbie business owner, somebody who's just trying to get their ducks in a row and get started on the right foot? Or where are the, what is the question you wish they would ask and they just <laughs> don't? And you know that you're just like, oh, I really want you to ask this, but you're not doing it. You know, I really find in hiring, that's usually the first interactions that I get hired for for business is hiring. Um, I really, one of my soapboxes is expect more from your employees. And they're just like, I just want somebody who's not an asshole and who will show up. Well, I'm going to, we're going to hire better than that. Um, and I'm going to recommend that you want more than that from your employees. <laughs> um, I have a blog post called don't be an asshole is not a job, is not role clarity. 
Um, we need to go deeper than that. And we need to have higher expectations. I get crazy questions. So real life example, someone calls me. My receptionist is watching Netflix at work. What do I do? Why would she think that's okay? Well, yesterday I said, you should check out this series. I, I love it. So when I said, why are you watching it? She actually had the nerve to say, you told me to. So yeah, no. <laughs> that was added to my job description, right? Binge watch and, you know. You recommended The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. So I should watch that on the clock, right? No, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not even work appropriate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not at all, yeah. It's a great show, but not work appropriate. Correct, yeah. When difficult conversations come up, what role do intangibles play and how best can you support the internal stakeholders, as you mentioned, the internal customers, mm -hmm. as well as the business owner who has the emotional impact of having to address somebody or fire somebody or whatever it is, they have to address an issue. How do you support the entire team cohesively when you know that there's going to be tension after addressing an issue like that? You know, um, one of my first recommendations is to stay transparent. Um, in any performance man management conversation, you want to state the facts um, and, and the facts of actions, but you also want to talk about how it impacted the business, how it impacted the internal customer, how it impacted the external customer, and how it impacted the bottom line. Um, you know, it costs us money, and this person was upset, and, you know, the, the statistics around word of mouth and somebody's having a bad experience and we got a bad Google review or whatever. You wanna talk about how that impacted everybody, a 360 view of that incident and just stick with the facts, stay unemotional. Um, and, you know, just the facts, ma'am. I don't know, I don't remember, was that Dragnet that did that? <laughs> anyway, um, again, transparency. You can't, let's say you write an employee up, you can't talk another to another employee about that how that conversation went, it's not their business. What you can do is have trust and rapport that you will handle things. And if they ask, say, I can't discuss that with you, but I took care of it. And if you've built enough trust and rapport and that person may have had a tough conversation with you at one time, they know that it was handled in a factual way and that the impact was, was discussed. Um, and then you can say, I will manage this going forward. If you could say one thing to a small business owner just getting started, what would it be? Don't expect perfection. Perfection is not the goal. Uh, progress is the goal every day. Um, you're not gonna know everything. You're, unless you're an accountant, you're not gonna know all the accounting, right? Unless you're a marketing person, you're not gonna know the marketing stuff. Learn what you don't know. Just knowing what you don't know is impactful, <laughs> but never expect perfection from yourself. It's okay to be wrong, make mistakes and learn. Where can we find out more about you and your work? Um, my website is www.unicycle.consulting. There's no .com or .net. Um, if you want to reach out and ask me questions, uh, my email is tami at unicycle.consulting. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, my Twitter account I don't pay much attention to, so don't worry about that. Um, and I'll be presenting at Startup Week. I have two presentations coming up as well. All of those you'll be able to stream live at your convenience straight from our partners and on the Startup uh, FOCO YouTube page, uh, which you are watching now if you're watching this on, on uh, video. So, uh, Tammy, is there anything else that you wanted to say that I didn't ask you or should have asked you? Um, no, I've had fun. Thanks so much for your time, Nick. Tammy, thanks so much for being here today. And if you want more great advice and actionable advice from our local business community, just check out the Startup FOCO podcast. We have archives going back, I think, four seasons now. It's an amazing opportunity to learn and dive in. And most of the advice that you will see in there is not time-bound. It's evergreen. It's a wonderful assortment of knowledge from some of our community's best and most creative minds. And we thank all of our guests, including Tammy, for taking their time and joining and sharing their knowledge with us. So uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you, Tammy, for being here with us. Thank you so much, Nick.